All right, guys, today is part three in this three-part series of prospecting for land. Today, we're going urban, and by urban, I mean low-density urban like the city I live in. We're gonna look at a random property in Kelowna, British Columbia, Canada. I filmed all this at once, so I'm basically just zooming into a property, and we're gonna check it out. We're gonna look at the aspect, look at the size of the property, see if we can find out anything about the neighborhood and the people in it and how that might benefit us running an urban farm. So this video is gonna be useful for anybody who's prospecting for land, because I wanna show you guys how you can actually learn a lot about a piece of land without even going there. So before I get into it, I just wanna say three quick things. June 15th at Jean-Martin Fortier's farm, still a couple tickets left. June 24th in Ottawa, there are still tickets for this. It's a one day event I'm doing there. And if you wanna come to the October 15th event at Rose Creek Farm in Selmer, Tennessee, you better get on it quick because the tickets are selling crazy fast. I've actually never seen an event sell this fast and uh, seems to be a lot of people down south interested. So if you wanna come to this event, you probably wanna jump on those tickets pretty quick. All right guys, let's get into it. Okay, let's, um, let's, oh look at there's some really nice gardeners over here. Isn't that nice? Okay, so let's check this out. So here we got a, these, this is probably a quarter acre lot. They're sort of the, the running size of lots in the downtown Kelowna area. And first thing we can see with this property is they've got about a, I'd say 1500 to 2000 square foot front yard and quite a significantly larger backyard, maybe 2,500 square feet or so, depending on what you can use. Now, first thing we notice is that the, the plots aren't necessarily optimized in that they're not, the house isn't orientated to the south um, and north, it's orientated to the east and west, but that's okay. So let's look at the front yard. Let's say we were gonna turn this into our urban homestead. Now, our front yard, we're, it means we're gonna have morning light because we've got a street in front of us, right? So these hedges that are across the street aren't gonna be an issue. Even, even a tall building across the street isn't gonna be much of an issue. When you've got a street is a, is, is a good enough distance to, uh, to allow lots of light to come through. So you're gonna have lots of light in the morning and you're gonna get some partial shade in the afternoon. Now, the neat thing about this um, is that if that was the case, if you had the, you're gonna have lots of shade in the late afternoon in the summer because the sun's gonna set over here on the northwest, casting the, sh the house is gonna cast a big shadow along here. And that's actually okay in the summer. That's not necessarily a bad thing because a little bit of relief from the sun in the summer is great. So that means, you know, this might be a prime place to be growing greens and stuff like that in the summer, especially close to the house to get some relief from the heat. Now, in the shoulder season, your window of light, like say, you know, everything but summer, spring, fall, and winter, your window of light is going to be sort of a triangular pattern this way. So your sun is coming up in the southeast and it's setting in the, in the uh, southwest. So it means that you'll actually get more light per capita in this front yard in the shoulder season than you will in the summer. So that's good. So the, the shadow of the house isn't going to affect you as much um, in the shoulder season as it will in the summer, but in the summer it's a good thing because your your spectrum of light is a lot more narrower. So that's good. Um, let's look at, well, let's just, let's explain the other plots here. So we got our, the backyard plot. Um, we got some kind of tree there. It's impossible to tell what it is with this, with. With, with maps, it's some kind of deciduous tree, and it's on the north side, so that's good. So as long as we're not planting under the, the, the drip line of that tree, and the drip line is where the edge of the foliage of the tree will drop water down, and so you don't wanna be under the drip line of the tree because that's gonna suck up all your water. So, um, you know, if you own this property, you might consider cutting that tree down. Maybe you don't want to, maybe you want a bit of shade. It's not so bad because it's on the north side, so, your south aspect's gonna be down there. So, you know, if I had this property and I was, I mean, if, if, if it was me, I would actually cut down that tree. And if I was like gonna make this property my home base, I would cut this tree down and I would put a nursery greenhouse or a production greenhouse right here 
uh, neighboring the uh, or going next to the neighbor's property because that's going to be the place that gets the most amount of light. Um, you know, you could put it in the front yard too, but your neighbors might have something to say about that. And it certainly would be in the sense that you'd get more morning light, which is actually better for a nursery. Um, but, you know, you, you, you could offset it from the house. So maybe you could put a, uh, let's see here, maybe like a 16 by, by 40, something like that might be in there. You know, in Google Maps, there's actually a little tool. You can use a little ruler tool. So you can actually draw yourself lines and it'll tell you how long it is. You can go feet or whatever. So, so I was right. You know, this is this is about 40 feet. So you could put a nice 20 by 40 foot nursery in there and pretty much get full sun all day most of the year. Um, you know, you got you got a little uh, a little workshop that could be your post harvest garage in there. Um, so as far as soil goes, it's harder to tell about the soil in an urban setting as it is with the rural because with the rural stuff you see more of the land shape and you see where water accumulates and things like that with the urban stuff you don't see that as much but you know you can see brown spots you know you can you can kind of get an idea of it um you know usually just going down there you're going to see a lot um right away but let's look at the neighbors now so we've got a big tall hedge here on the south side so that's you know, that's not ideal. It means that we probably wouldn't put any crops in here on the shoulder season, but we certainly could in the summer, and that would be totally fine because in the summer it'll get lots of uh, lots of sun. Um, so you really want to consider, you know, what your aspect is, where the sun's coming up, where it's going down, consider the trees. Now, let's talk about the neighbors. So, I mean, this neighbor right here is rock and roll. Like this dude is killing it with the garden. And even down the alley here, they're killing it with the garden. So that's awesome. It's so cool when you, you when you can have some neighbors around you that are gardening because they're for sure going to be passionate about what you're doing. And so here, maybe we've got some kind of permaculture hippie here. we got some kind of cool looking garden there. You know, these guys got the raised beds and all that. So that's awesome. So, you know, you want to look at what the neighbors are doing. Um, one thing that's nice about this property in particular is the fences look pretty good. So the only neighbor that's gonna be concerned about what you're doing in this particular spot is this one. But the fences are good, and so that's not an issue. They might have something to say about the front yard, but who knows? I mean, it's your property, right? So it's it's up to you. And um, across the street, you got a big development happening on. So that's, that's not gonna be an issue yet, but it might be. And so this is the kind of thing like if you're going to buy if you're going to buy property like say you're going to buy this house and you want to do like an urban homestead or something like that then um you would want to consider what's going on here next to next door okay get this text message out of here stupid um because if they're going to put a skyscraper in there next door well then you know, you probably want to know about that. That might that might change your decisions on what you want to do. And so, like, let's just say we're let's say we are starting here. We got our home base here, and then we might want to look for other land. And this is actually what I did when I was looking for land with my urban farm. Is I would just scan neighborhoods and go, okay, yeah, look at this in the neighborhood. We got some good sized yards. You know, um, I would be like, you know, if it was me and I was at this place. The first thing I would do if when I moved into this is I would introduce myself to these two neighbors that have the gardens and tell them about what I do. And I would try to subtly uh, see if this neighbor who's already got the garden in the backyard would be interested in letting me farm their front yard because they might not want to garden it. And judging by the size of their garden, they're happy with the size of their garden. Maybe they find their lawn is a pain in the ass. Maybe they they don't want to mow that lawn, but they don't they don't have the time to have that much garden. So you could come along and offer a solution. Hey, how about I take care of your front yard property for you? I'll give you a kickback of vegetables. Or hey, you know what? Here's an offer. I'm gonna have a greenhouse in my backyard. How about I start all your nursery stuff for you every season? Uh, for your garden as a trade for using your front yard because maybe they don't need vegetables because they grow enough you know just things like that it's always about finding a way to offer value to people you know and um yeah so you know looking through the neighborhood here we've got lots of good lawns and, you know look at this this is cool like got some gardeners here 
um, you know, there's stuff happening. There's, th there's lots of green in this neighborhood, you know? And so the cool thing is, is once you get started, and this is what I tell people all the time, and I, we're gonna we're gonna leave this one here. But once you get started, you get some you get anchored down somewhere. You get some production going. People are gonna come around. They're gonna come and check out your property, and they're gonna ask questions. And there's gonna be opportunities that come out of that. And so the first thing you want to know is get to know your neighbors really well. Build a nice rapport with them. Bring them some veggies. Surprise them with some stuff. Build that rapport, and then those neighbors are gonna tell their friends, and then they're gonna tell other neighbors. And sooner or later. You're going to have people from all over the neighborhood asking you if you can farm their yard. All right, guys, if you found that helpful, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and hit that notifications bell next to the subscribe button because YouTube has changed some things around and people who are subscribing to channels aren't necessarily seeing the videos for some reason. So hitting that notification will make sure that you do see the videos. If you guys have any more comments or questions, leave them below and I really appreciate your guys' suggestions. A lot of the videos that I've come up with in 2018 have been from your suggestions. So thank you for giving good suggestions and I appreciate the feedback and a lot of the things that you guys have just suggested and commented on over the years I have used to improve my channel. I remember a while ago some guy was talking about, hey, you gotta do better audio, so bought a better mic, you know, things like this. Um, I appreciate the constructive ones, the, the haters, not so much, but the constructive criticism and feedback is always welcome. All right guys, talk to you later. <laughs>